Hello students, hope all of you are good. Today we are going to start with our next phylum that is the phylum Cylindrata. Cylindrates are also known as nidariates. So what is the main cause why they are called as nidaria? Because in case of the body surface, it bear a specific cell and that cell is known as nidoblast. So the reason why they are called as nidarian because in case of this phylum Cylindrata, their body surface bear a cell and that cell is known as nidoblast. So how does nidoblast work? What will be the function of the nidoblast? We will see in detail later on. First of all, let us see the characteristics, general characteristics, basis of classification mm -hmm. in the phylum Cylindrata. Before that, see in the phylum Cylindrates, uh, around 9000 species around 9000 species we are able to we are able to uh, find out so we can discover as much as we can and from that around 9000 species are till now discovered so let us start with the general characters what are the general characters first of all in the phylum cylindrates what is the habit and habitat so first of all see in the phylum, earlier phylum, uh, porifera, we have seen that mostly the phylum porifera, the species are marine species. From that one species was there, which was free, uh, freely, they live in the uh, aquatic condition that is fresh water. That is the phylum, uh, in the phylum porifera, that is the species, that species is the sponzilla. Now, just see in the phylum cylindrates also, same thing is happening. Number of species, they are found in the marine condition. Yes, mostly they are marine except one. What is that species? That is hydra. So, in case of habitat, remember one point that this, uh, this species in, uh, in that phylum cylindrata, mostly they are marine. Mostly they are marine. Except one species, what is that? The hydra. Remember, hydra is the fresh watered species only. So that is about the habitat. Now come to the habit. First of all, in the habit, remember that actually how this organism live, how they are living, what is the condition, that is habit. In case of the phylum cylindrata, mostly they uh, live in two conditions. Either they are sessile or they are free swimming. Sessile means the species who attach to the substratum. That means they cannot move by its own. They attach to the bottom, suppose seabed, they can attach to the seabed, they can attach to the uh, rock or they can attach to some another species body surface too. So that organism who cannot move by their own, they attach to the substrata, they are known as sessile species. Okay, so under that sessile species, we have numbers of organisms like hydra. Hydra is a sessile species. Next one, uh, in case of habit, another type of organism who have the locomotory organ and because of that, they can freely swim now. So, another organism, they are free swimming. In both the condition, either it can be marine or fresh water, they can uh, now freely swim. So, freely swimming organisms, all of you have seen already in numbers of uh, channels and movies, they are the jellyfishes. So, you can see the jellyfishes which are transferring white uh, type of organism who move in the uh, sea water. These are the free swimming animals. What are they? One example I can give you that is this species that is jellyfish. Okay, so uh, this is jellyfish. This is actually the general name, but its scientific name is Aurelia. Remember, this is actually Aurelia. Now, another condition on the habit itself that either this organism can be solitary or they can live in colonies. So, first of all, what is solitary condition and what is colonial condition? Solitary or colonial. So, what is solitary or colonial condition? See, in this phylum cylindrate, some of the species, they live 
uh, but they live individually they do not live in group so those organisms who live freely in the water freely swim in the water they are known as solitary animals okay suppose jellyfish hydra these are solitary animals but some of the organisms they live in groups a number of species they live together they float together so those species who live in colonies they are known as colonial species i can give you the example one example is physelia now just see in the sea water actually whenever they live in the colonies a number of species in a number of species they actually freely float in the water so just see suppose this is the water in the water a number of species they live uh, suppose floating on that sea water okay suppose these are all the species they starting living together okay and what is the reason why they living together uh, actually they live together so that's why a numbers of uh, functions they get easier for them now why because now in that colony some of the uh, species they are performing one specific function some of the organism they performing another function so in that colony actually uh, it is seen that division of labor had occurred in some species and those body forms in that phylum cylindrata in the colonial condition they form the zooids so what are the zooids these are actually some forms some body forms some species they itself develop into performing some specific function suppose i can give you the example here suppose here some of the species are living and they hold the whole colony in the surface okay so those species who actually developing a, a swimming belt like structure they actually help the other species to float in the water so how this is happening because those species which is living on the surrounding they uh, start to accumulate what uh, air inside them and because of that actually it look like a balloon and because of that the whole colony can float together so in that zooid actually you can see some swimming belt type of uh, layer is been developed around the whole colony and suppose here some another species now this species are performing digestion that means now they can capture the food and after that they help in digestion some of them they suppose these are the species now and those species are helping only in reproduction that means it is producing only the gametes so in the same colony a number of species are converted itself into a specific function some of them they help the species the whole colony in suppose floating condition they help them to float some of them they perform only digestion some of them they performing suppose reproduction those forms in the colony is known as zooids so what are the zooids some of the examples are gastrozooid gastrozooid means they help in digestion so these are suppose helping in capturing the food then after that it help in digestion so this is gastrozooid then after that we have pneumatophore so this pneumatophores help this organism to float in the uh, sea water some of them they help only in capturing the prey so they are known as dactylozooid so these are what these are some of the body forms actually the whole species are converting itself into performing a specific function dactylozooids means this species is going to have some um, teeth like structure because of what it can capture the prey okay so that type of species they form some colonies and in the colonies a number of zooids are found and those zooids can be gastrozooid who help in digestion it can be pneumatophores who help this organism to float in the sea water it is also dactylozooid that means it is uh, actually some species who capture or trap the food prey or some of the species suppose this organism uh, release the gamete which help in reproduction they are known as gonozooid so this way we see a specific
specific function in the phylum Cylindrata when they live in the colony this organism start to live in a mass and after that some of the special suppose uh, organisms they perform they start to perform a special function and this way they form the zooids so this is the first characteristics very much important remember in the general characteristics that is habit and habitat next one next characteristics let us see in the next characteristics that is symmetry so under the symmetry what is that in case of this organism basically this organisms are round suppose this is a species umbrella shaped species so this organism are radially symmetrical animal so these are going to have radial symmetry next one their level of organization what is the level of organization now in the phylum porifera what we got that the phylum porifera the species have just some cells they have just cellular grade of organization in the phylum cylindrata a little bit advanced character have been shown that some of the cells now can perform some uh, specific function now the divisions of occur uh, divisions of labor had occurred inside the species also that means now they start to form the tissues so those organism have tissue level of organization now just some combinations of cells had occurred and those cells are performing a specific function so this way tissue grade of organization come to exist next character after that we will see the germ layer how many layers are present how many germ layers are there in the phylum porifera what i said that the species do not have any type of germ layer they cannot form any germ layer they have just some aggregation of cells but now in phylum cylindrata what is happening now they form two germ layers the first germ layer endoderm is there and just above that they are forming the another germ layer that is ectoderm so in case of this organism two germ layers are there ectoderm and endoderm this type of animals they are diploblastic animals this organisms are diploblastic have two germ layers in between these two germ layers do they have something like the phylum porifera i have shown you that they're uh, inside in between the outer layer and inner layer they have some jelly like matrix in this phylum also the ectoderm and endoderm are present outside and inside and in between the ectoderm and endoderm they also have a jelly like matrix here and this is actually the mesenchyme you can call or the parenchyma also you can call so this germ layer that is diploblastic which is having a, a jelly like matrix inside this is known as parenchyma next one next characteristic c in the phylum uh, cylindrata do they have silom so is it possible to have silom now no because silom is derived from the mesoderm if this organism is triploblastic then only it is possible that they can form the silom or the body cavity but now in this case the organism is itself diploblastic so this with this organism do not have actually any type of silom so this organisms are acylomate so this organism is acylomate do not have any body cavity next characteristic see the next characteristics that in the phylum cylindrates the another characteristics is their uh, body plan what type of body plan is present in case of phylum cylindrates see i told you that in the uh, body plan we have two body plan one is blind sac another is tube within tube body plan now in this case in phylum cylindrates these organisms are not specialized to form a digestive system or digestive cavity this is not present so in case of this organism there uh, suppose this organism on the apical surface they have just one opening and that opening is performing as a mouth as well as a anus that means it can trap the food also ingest the food also with the same um, suppose uh, opening and also they ingest from the same opening so what is happening in them they have a mouth like structure mouth or anus same thing so they have a common opening we can call it as the hypostome remember stome means 
uh, mouth. Hypo means it is just beneath. That means in this phylum cylindrata, the, the tip is not the mouth. The mouth is present somewhat below. So that animal have a hypostome and inside that organism, there is a large cavity present. So that is the gastrovascular cavity. Do not confuse it with the silo. They don't have the silo. Now in this species, they have a body cavity, a large body cavity that is known as the, uh, this is just the gastrovascular cavity. This is not at all silo. So the next characteristics we'll see that is about their body plan. So in that body plan, if this organism do not have any specialized mouth or anus and have only one opening which is serving both as a mouth as well as a anus, what type of body plan it will have? That is blind sac. Remember, they are going to have blind sac body plan. Next characteristics about their digestion. So what type of digestion they will have? See, this organism digestion is both extracellular and intracellular. Extracellular as well as intracellular means what? First of all, the digestion will take place in the gastrovascular cavity. And once the digestion had taken place, suppose the food molecule is divide, broken into some smaller, smaller uh, parts, suppose, then those parts will be taken up by the cells now. And inside the cells, the further digestion will occur. So first of all, they will have extracellular digestion. And after that, when the cells take this, uh, suppose, pieces or the parts of the food material and further it divides inside the cell, that is intracellular. So digestion is both. First of all, they will have extra cellular digestion and after that intracellular. So this organism have both extracellular and intracellular digestion. Body plan actually look like C. First of all, this is the species. This is a species. Now in that species, first of all, from the body, some buds are also been seen attached to the substratum because this organism is sessile. Now in that organism, towards the surface, the numbers of structures, these are known as tentacles, they are arising. So these are the tentacles. So tentacles are some sensory uh, string type structure who attach to uh, suppose some predator or prey, they get sense, uh, they get this sense. And if it is suppose a food particle, they trap it. So uh, the mouth, the mouth is actually present somewhere beneath it, behind it. So this is a mouth which is present inside. What is that? This is the hypostome. So in this case, in this organism, they have a large gastrovascular cavity inside. So that gastrovascular cavity will perform first of all digestion. And after that, after digestion is completed, suppose partly some part will be not uh, digested in the uh, gastrovascular cavity, then the cell will take it once again. And whenever the cells will take it once again, what will happen inside the cell, intracellularly the digestion will take place. So digestion will be both. So they will have extracellular as well as intracellular digestion. If I uh, tell you here that in this lining, how many cell layers are been seen? So that cell layers, we will see their body wall now. So how many body walls they are present? So first of all, this organism is diploblastic. So diploblastic organism will have two germ layer, ectoderm and endoderm. So just see outside the X, the outermost layer, this is actually made up, actually developed from the ectoderm. So ectoderm form a cell layer, the outer layer that is known as the epidermis. So this is the epidermis layer. So this is also we can call this is the epidermal 
layer cell layer also we can call so this is the epidermal cell layer so in that epidermal cell layer how many different types of cells are present see first of all they will have epithelial cells obviously this organism is going to have this ectoderm this is ectoderm germ layer who form this epidermal cell layer so it is going to have the epithelial muscular layers muscular cells are also present so that muscular cell help this organism to move now a very interesting cell i told that the cylindrates are also known as lideria why because this organism have some specific cell on the body surface that is known as nidoblast now to see what is that nidoblast so this is the nidoblast now so in this case this nidoblast is present so this is the nidoblast present and that nidoblast whenever comes in contact with anything then it starts to work so how it will work we will see so this is nidobal nidoblast uh, then epithelial muscular cells then along with that some interstitial cells suppose here some cells they are known as interstitial cells these are also present so these are the interstitial cell so those interstitial cells are actually the totipotent cell in that same epidermal cell there are number of cells are also present uh, till now they do not perform any function if suppose some of the cells die then those interstitial cell will go to that region and perform the function of that dead cell now just see one cell i have drawn here this is the nidoblast so nidoblast once it perform after performing it dies so whenever it dies in this region a empty space will be developed so from this region the interstitial cell will come to this region outer region surface region and develop into a nidoblast so what are those interstitial cells these interstitial cells actually these are the totipotent cell which can transform into any of the another type of cells now here also they will have another nerve cells too so these are the nerve cells suppose so varieties of cells are present nerve cells or sensory cells are present nidoblast interstitial epithelial muscular cells these are present on the outermost epidermal cell layer which is developed from the ectoderm now inside inside there is a another cell layer present and this cell layer basically here you can see a number of cells are present here okay so this cells these are the gastric cells so gastric cells means here they will perform digestion they carry some uh, digestive juice and whenever they uh, trap the food particle then they digest it so this layer this is known as this cell layer is known as the gastro dermis so this gastrodermis contain a number of cells they suppose are gland cell so this gland cell will release the secretion to this region this will be a large gastrovascular cavity so this gland cell will pour some secretion into that gastrovascular uh, layer this gastrovascular uh, part so that extracellular type of digestion can take place then other type of cells here also interstitial cells are present some muscular cells are there some muscular cell layer this is also some muscular cells present then some another sensory cells are also present so these are the sensory cells so this internal layer that is the gastrodermis gastrodermis is actually developed derived from the endoderm so ectoderm form this epidermal cell layer and endoderm form this gastrodermis now in between ectoderm and endoderm what is present see there is a jelly like matrix present which do not have any cells of its own so this is just the jelly like matrix so in that jelly like matrix some nerve cells for the first time 
This phylum Cylindrata developed the sensory or the nerve cell. So this sensory or the nerve cell they will uh, be present in this middle layer. So this middle layer this is known as the we can call it as the mesoglia 2 where some neural cells or sensory cells they are present. So this way we will see three uh, three layers uh, sorry the two layers that is epidermal cell layer and the gastrodermal cell layer but in the middle in between gastrodermis and the epidermis they are going to have a non-cellular uh, jelly like matrix layer that is the mesoglia or also we can call this is as the mesohill layer also we can call it as the parenchymatous layer also which is actually nothing but a jelly like matrix so in there some nerve cells are present so this nerve cells or the sensory cells have this capacity so that this organism whenever it comes in contact with anything they get readily sensitive and after that it kills any uh, predator if it is and if it is a prey they, they catch it okay so that is about their body what or that body layer how many layers are present first of all actually this organism will have two layers so what those two layers are these two layers are epidermal layer and gastrodermal layer so this epidermal layer is developed from the ectoderm and this gastrodermis layer the inner layer that is developed from the mesoderm so that is about the two uh, layers in the middle they will have the non-cellular jelly-like mesoglia after that let us see the next characteristics that is how this nidoblast work so in the body layer already we have seen that outer layer that is epidermal cell layer have a specific cell that is known as nidoblast so just see how this nidoblast actually look like so nidoblast have a outer plasma membrane outside it's a cell so cell will have its cell membrane that is the cell wall so this is the cell wall present inside there is a bag like structure present so there is a bag like structure present inside that cell so the whole cell is nidoblast and inside there is a bag that contain a toxin that is actually hypnotoxin which can paralyze the predator or the prey so this is the hypnotoxin which is present inside the bag like structure inside the nidoblast that is known as nematocyst so that nematocyst is actually enclosed within the cell now just see above there is a covering present and that covering is known as the operculum so this is the operculum and inside that there is a inverted this structure uh, inverted shaft like structure is present which is going to have a thread tube like structure so this is the thread tube now this is a cell so obviously this will have its own nucleus too so this nucleus is present somewhere on the basal side so this is the nucleus now some of the nidoblasts will have a structure attaching structure this one this is known as lasso okay and some type of cells uh, sorry some type of fibers are present so those fibers are actually holding supporting that nemato uh, nematocyst inside the nidoblast so this is the nidoblast so this cell how it will work see first of all towards the surface operculum region to one corner there is a sting like structure present and that sting like structure is known as nidocyl now whenever that organism uh, suppose the whole species come in contact with any predator or the prey then suddenly what happened inside that or uh, suppose nidoblast there is an inflow of water occurs that means inside the nidoblast 
water start to enter so that is the endosmosis so first of all endosmosis occurs endosmosis may be a new word to you endosmosis means it's a phenomenon by which this cell start to take water inside it so water starts to present inside start to enter inside that cell so whenever that water enter inside the cell actually what will happen see i will draw the diagram first of all this needle cell suppose this is the needle cell this needle cell come in contact with any suppose any prey or predator then what will happen readily that shaft which is earlier inverted now it will get everted that means now the shaft will be like this so operculum opens first of all water enters so whenever water enters what happened this is the nematocyst right above that the shaft that will be everted so whenever that shaft everted then what will happen this thread tube will be opened and the thread tube they will release the hypnotoxin suppose this is the predator here so first of all with the help of the thread tube it inject that hypnotoxin inside that predator or the prey's body so what will happen that predator or the prey that will that will get paralyzed and if it is a predator they can hide from that region they can uh, they can move from that region location or if it is a prey suppose then they will take it and it will digest it so that is actually what happened that thread tube open shaft open this nematocyst which enclose this hypnotoxin that hypnotoxin will be injected via this thread tube into the uh, suppose predator or the prey's body this way this nidoplast works so see this nidoplast will be open due to endosmosis water enters then after that this operculum open then after that the shaft this is the shaft which is earlier inverted now it will get everted and after that this thread tube which is earlier coiled it will be open this lasso will be also uh, push this cell this nematocyst part not a cell nematocyst towards upper region so that it can uh, release that hypnotoxin so hypnotoxin via the shaft enter inside the thread tube thread tube will inject that hypnotoxin inside suppose the body of the predator or the prey so this way this nidoblast works so what is the function of this nidoblast so the function of the nidoblast is first function that is capturing the prey so first function capture of prey then second function paralyze the predator and also the another function that is encourage so what is encourage encourage means suppose this organism is moving okay so swimming first of all whenever suppose there is a uh, suppose any substratum is present it will hold to that it will hold to that and it will stick to that location so it will help actually help in gripping so with the help of this nidoblast it will also grip uh, help gripping this organism the whole organism and it will stop moving so these are the different functions performed by this nidoblast what are the function first function capture of the prey second function paralyze the predator and the third function is encourage that means it will hold and it can stop after that let us see the next part that is about their uh, digestion already i have told you but the digestion i will write here that is both extracellular and intracellular both extra and intracellular but do they have complete digestive tract no they lack complete digestive tract next one in case of them 
uh, for the first time uh, the nervous system have developed by some cells so for the first time in case of phylum cylindrata the consciousness this characteristics are very much important characteristics in the phylum cylindrates so right from the cylindrates up to the cortex all of them they have this nervous or the sensory control so for the first time this consciousness has arise in terms of some cells the nerve cells have appeared so some neurons are there and those neurons are actually the apolar neuron so a cell just some sensory cells are present in the outer epidermis also in the gastrodermis cells also cell layer also this neural or the sensory cells are present now after that just see about their skeleton so in case of them some species like the corals in case of corals in another some species have a specific type of uh, outermost covering that covering is made up of calcium carbonate so they have a calcareous shell or their skeleton is made up of cal uh, calcium carbonate so this is calcareous next characteristic c about their body forms so body form in phylum cylindrate is important so what is body form in this group this phylum actually they have two body form one is polyp and another is medusa now what is polyp and medusa polyp is actually the sedentary organism so what is polyp and medusa polyp and medusa they are the two body forms one is polyp which is the sedentary structures sedentary structures means this organism live attaching to the substratum on the bottom of the sea or attaching to suppose some organisms uh, covering or the body surface so these are the sedentary organism which cannot move by their own they attach to the substratum mm -hmm. and the medusa who have now the locomotory organ by which they can now move so these are the free swimming organisms so in this body form they have two specific term you have to remember one is polyp which is sedentary and medusa which is free swimming mm -hmm. now just see how many organisms are included here who can actually attach to the substratum which are polyp and free swimming or medusa uh, in polyp we have hydra adamsia these organisms are polyp or they actually attach to the substratum they cannot move by their own and next one is medusa medusa actually is the free swimming organism i already have given you the example earlier that is the jellyfish so in case of jellyfish what happened they have this tentacles you can see so with the help of the tentacles they can swim now so these are the free swimming organism which we can also call this medusa i can give you the example here this is aurelia suppose so aurelia is a medusa now just see in between um this body form actually another very important characteristic actually is seen what is that that is metagenesis what is metagenesis means metagenesis actually is a phenomenon by which one body body form convert to the next body form so what is that body form see polyp and medusa we have seen in some of the cases in some of the species actually what happened the polyp transform into medusa and medusa transform into polyp so those organism who actually alter the polyp form to medusa in their lifetime this is called as metagenesis that means they transform polyp to medusa and medusa to the polyp this phenomenon metagenesis simply you can call this is alternation alternation of generation so this is metagenesis now which organism will show this characteristics that means which organism will show metagenesis remember this is very much important 
This organism is Obelia. Obelia is commonly known as sea fur. So in this organism Obelia, they actually show polyp to medusa and then medusa to polyp. So this metagenesis alternation of generation is found in case of this species. Now just I will show the whole uh, life, uh, life, whole life cycle in this part C. First of all, this, this is suppose the seabed. Okay, above the water is there. So now this organism, first of all, this organism will start from a polyp. So this is the polyp. Okay, so this polyp will grow in size. So this polyp will develop some buds. So this way they will grow. At one period of time, this buds, they will grow in such a way that at one period of time, some of the bud, they get detached actually. Suppose this is the bud, this bud get detached like this, this get detached. So whenever they detach, they form a medusa. So first of all, you can see this polyp grow in uh, number, actually grows by just normal vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction, just by forming some buds. And those buds sometime, at one period of time, they will bud off from the parent body and after that it form the medusa. So polyp form medusa by what type of reproduction this is asexual reproduction so this medusa have been formed now now this medusa can freely move they can freely swim now this medusa will produce the gametes okay so male and the female gamete will now be released in the same water now in the water the male and the female gamete will get fused or fertilized so they will have external fertilization now. So they will fuse, they form a zygote. So that zygote will undergo cleavage. The one cell will undergo mitosis and it forms two cells. So this way, numbers of cells will produce after mitosis, after mitosis and after that, it form a larva. That larva is known as planula larva. This planula have the outer cilia or some locomotory structures are present with the help of what they can move now. So planula is a larva which can move freely at one period of time. What happened from the body surface of the larva, those cilia like structures start to shed off. And at one period of time, there will be no cilia in the planula's body. What will happen after that? They get deposited in the seawater. So at one period of time, whenever those cilia start to uh, suppose shed from their body surface, at one period of time, it gets deposited or it gets attached to the substratum or on the river bed or uh, sorry on the seabed that will transform into a polyp. So you just see this is the medusa and this is the polyp. So medusa formed a polyp in uh, what way in which mean that is sexual reproduction because it formed a gamete. So there is a famous term here remember that is polyp form medusa asexually and medusa form polyp sexually. So this phenomenon metagenesis or alternation of generation is found in case of the uh, species Obelia under the phylum cylindrates. Otherwise, in some species, suppose in case of Aurelia, the whole life, the Aurelia will be only in the medusa form. Suppose Hydra, Hydra will be always sedentary. They will have the, the whole life in the sessile or sedentary form only. So they will have either polyform throughout life or medusa form throughout uh, throughout the life or it can have another mean also that is metagenesis which transform medusa to the polyp and from polyp to medusa so this way they will have alternation of generation now after that come to the last point we're coming to the last point of the phylum cylindris i will write here only see what happened to this group of organism about their reproduction so in case of reproduction till now this organism is not divided into male or the female so this organism are monoecious they don't have any sex so they're not determined till now what type of reproduction will be seen 
it is both asexual so asexual type of reproduction here in the life cycle of obelia we have seen that is the budding process so they will have budding if it is asexual reproduction and also in the same phylum cylindrata sexual reproduction is also same so by forming this gametes they will perform sexual reproduction too so if it is in case of reproduction they will have sexual as well as asexual reproduction also next one next see about their fertilization what type of fertilization is seen see in case of phylum cylindrates the fertilization is external how it is external see so here you see the medusa they release their gamete in the water so if it is releasing their gamete in the water what type of reproduction will you see so it is external because inside their body actually uh, fertilization had not take place so what is happening in the sea water they release their gamete and in the medium that is in the water the gametes fuse or fertilize so that type of fertilization is external fertilization after that let us move to their development what type of development can you expect from this life cycle can you tell me what is the type of development the type of development here is indirect development why indirect development because here the larval stage you have seen what is that planular larva so in case of phylum cylindrates the development is indirect that means in this phylum cylindrates the larval stages or the larva they're found in their life cycle or their life form so that is all about the phylum cylindrates very much important a number of questions are coming from here also and in the pdf i will provide you the scientific name and uh, the general or common name from this phylum cylindrates that is all about the phylum cylindrata remember their alternation of generation second thing remember about their body valve for the first time they developed the nervous system there are uh, two body valves that is ectoderm from their epidermis and endoderm from their gastrodermis remember that point and another point about their specific Uh, cell that is uh, the nidoblast so this nidoblast one question also come that nidoblast encloses nematocyst or nido uh, nematocyst consists the nidoblast so this is one famous question here in the phylum cylindrates so already you have seen that nidoblast which is the cell inside the cell nidoblast there is a, a hypnotoxin uh, bag is present and that bag is known as nematocyst so it is the nematocyst which is enclosed by the cell nidoblast or nidoblast encloses the nematocyst so remember those questions that important also in objective exams these are Uh, these are coming that which form what asexually or sexually remember polyform medusa asexually and medusa form the polyp sexually this is one important question and second question is nidoblast encloses nematocyst uh, nematocyst but not that nematocyst enclose the nidoblast it is nidoblast itself which is Uh, actually the cell inside a bag like structure is present that is nematocyst so that is all about the phylum cylindrates so uh, scientific name and common name see from the pdf and from the book ncert book also that is all about the phylum cylindrates thank you